Now, the United Nations Human Rights Council says that one in eight Ukrainians are displaced. Let's talk to our reporter, Rosie Wright, who is in Hungary for us. Good morning, Rosie. Um, thank you for doing such a brilliant job uh, this weekend. Let us know, would you, what, what the mood is like there this morning. We're hearing huge numbers of people being displaced. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, I'm at Zahorn Station in Hungary. It's just two kilometers from the border with Ukraine. A train came in from Ukraine from the town of Chop this morning. And just a few minutes ago, other trains left this station going back to Ukraine. Of course, we're really associating this crisis and this conflict with people fleeing the country. But like Alexander that I spoke to earlier, some people are having to go back in, whether that's with humanitarian aid, with resources. And actually, train is an easier way to do that in some cases because a lot of the roads have been really disrupted in some cases destroyed but what we can see at the station now is actually far quieter a train left for budapest about 20 minutes ago lots of people will be going there because once you get there of course you've then got access to uh, majority of the eu but i'd just like to show you inside the station as well if we go through when people arrive there's ticket offices and there's a huge numbers of volunteers so people are giving you if you've got they call it a solidarity ticket. If you've got a Ukrainian passport, you can come in and say, look, I need to go somewhere. We'll just come through. Jim can follow me through here. Really quiet now because the train's left. We are expecting more trains coming in from Ukraine from about nine o'clock onwards. So it's rare to see it like this. Um, but there's information up everywhere and lots of sort of boards for people speaking different languages so you can point at things and say and it's really heartbreaking sometimes but it might just be I'm cold I'm hungry here look if you want to offer accommodation for refugees or if you need emergency accommodation if you're a refugee for example here and you don't know how to continue your travel the other thing we're seeing here at this station is some really heartbreaking family reunions. I was just speaking to Olena. She's a 19-year-old history student. Let's just sort of imagine the life of a 19-year-old right now. The world's at her feet, excited with her studying. Her and her family, they were 40 kilometers from Belarus. Now, there isn't a humanitarian corridor for them to take. As she was in a car, it was a convoy, a car in a van, her driver from Belarus got shot and killed. Now, she didn't want to talk publicly on camera to it, but she explained the story to us and said, actually, from that point onwards, there was so much trauma, and I'm sorry this is difficult at, at this time of the morning, but what happened in the car, she can't actually even remember how she then escaped that situation. She managed to find some family and then right now, about 10 minutes ago, just before I came on air to speak to you, she's been reunited with other family members. Of course, all females because people's dads, their partners, their boyfriends, they've had to stay behind. It was extraordinary this morning speaking to Alexander, the Ukrainian who's left, who's had special government permission to leave the country, to then come back and go back into the country, back into the capital, into Kyiv with humanitarian supplies. Some quite extraordinary stories of absolute resilience. And people aren't overly emotional. People look quite tired and exhausted, but there aren't loads of tears. What there are instead are people who have this absolute steely resolve to get on with it and do the very best they can for them and often for their small children.